from Colonial Life Arena in Columbia, South Carolina. It's women's college basketball and an SEC showdown tonight. The South Carolina Gamecocks play host to the Tigers of Auburn. I'm Dave Weinstein alongside the former Gamecock, Brett Ball. South Carolina remains undefeated, the number one team in the land picking up a win at Georgia. It wasn't easy, and tonight they welcome in an Auburn team that's much improved from a season ago in year two for Coach Harris. Auburn on the rise in the SEC, so this should be a fun one tonight, Brett. Yes, Dave, as you said, South Carolina is returning to the CLA, still number one in the country, still number one in the conference. Auburn's returning for their second road game for the season. Both teams have a unique defensive proudness given that they're ranked top 10 for block shots. And I just think it's a great opportunity that both teams are trying to get a clinch this W early in their SEC season. On the win at Georgia, it was Zaya Cook who set a career high, 31 points. Yeah, Zaya Cook, she just zoned in. She continues to make a statement coming off a career. A stellar performance, a new career high of 31 points versus Georgia. She's becoming more confident and consistent with her shot, shooting 48%. She continues to just be a scoring threat for opponents. If Auburn doesn't have an answer for her, she's, she will continue to keep cooking. Well, she's an all-SEC talent, and Auburn has one of those as well. Aisha Koulibaly leads the Tigers in most major categories. She had 20 and 7 against Mizzou. Koulibaly, again, preseason all-SEC second team. As you said, 20 points, 7 rebounds. Even though they fell up, fell short against Missouri, she's just been productive in, in every single category for her team right now. She leads the team in points per game, rebounds, steals, blocks, free throw percentage, and minutes per player. For, uh, minutes per player and Coach Harris just said she's been working to create her own shot. She's looking to just for her to be a productive in this game. Oh, she will have to step up even more tonight because honestly Scott Grayson is the second leading scorer on the team. She was in sweats during warm-ups. We don't expect her to play tonight. She's missed the last two games, Brett. Yeah, as, as you said before, Dave, again, this gives the, the Koulibaly uh, opportunity to really step up and fill that uh, produ offensive productivity gap um, there. And again, this is just basketball. Injuries happen, and you just have to be ready to step up to the plate against the number one team in the nation. Scott Grayson out. Johnson on the point. Cook right away off the bat. The first two go to the Gamecocks. <laughs> Our player to watch again, Cook. She's just been in the zone and been really playing extremely well these past games. She's been averaging a little over 14 points in the past six games. So we just expect her to continue with that consistency. Sydney Shaw, the freshman, now playing the two. And she gets the bounce. Shaw, a freshman from Miami, Florida, averaging 8.4 per game. Started all but one game this season. Boston, a good look inside to Saxton, who finishes. Just great ball, just great court awareness from Boston and a good ball movement. Um, also good movement without the ball for Victoria Saxon and, and the way to finish. Shaquayla Johnson, junior guard from Clinton, Mississippi, a JUCO transfer from Jones College. Swings it over to Koulibaly. Koulibaly goes down. She'll be called for the travel. It's a turnover for Auburn. Four to two lead early on for the Gamecocks. Kara Fletcher, who has established herself as a starting point guard this season. Grad transfer from Georgia Tech. Cook tries to feed Boston. She keeps it in play. Fletcher, the turnaround, no good. Boston offensive rebound. That's what she's so great at. And the follow-up. Nice finish by Lil Boston. Again, her just doing her usual Lil Boston ability uh, moves to, to, to create space enough for the finish. Leah Boston averaging 11.4 per game, 8.9 rebounds as well. Just four points at Georgia and six points against AM. So she'll look to pick it up tonight against Auburn, prove those numbers in SEC play. The defenses have certainly focused on Aaliyah Boston. That has a lot to do with those numbers. Beal, a little too high for Saxton. It's a turnover. Good idea, but like you said, it's just a little too high. Um, but good idea in terms of pushing and pushing the ball in transition, but I think they <laughs> tap each other's hands as, hey, you know, next time we'll get it. Koulibaly will drive against Saxton off the glass. No good. The rebound from Fletcher. Great drive by Koulibaly. Auburn is going to need to see more aggressive drives like that, but 
um, next time she just has to be able to finish. Boston. Fletcher all alone. She drives in. She feeds Boston. Good court awareness again. It's just been the, the feed the post player day, which is really essential to Carolina's offense. Um, good, good job by the post players and just the guards seeing the open man and being able to deliver the basketball to them and then being able to finish. Four points, two rebounds already for Aaliyah Boston. Levy pulls up. No good, the rebound to Fletcher. She'll look to push. Zaya Cook coming off a career high. Circus shot, no good. His ball will be, will be Auburn basketball. There's a look at Zaya, averaging 15.3 per game, the leading scorer on the team. Double digits in all but two games this season. A lot of that damage against Georgia was at the free throw line. She was 11 for 13 from the line. Not just a great shooter, Brett, but she's shown the ability to draw the foul, get the easy points. Yeah, and that's very important because Zaya is the type to, to, to drive the back to the basket. Steal from Koulibaly, puts a move on Boston. Boston says no. <laughs> Not today. Boston averaging 1.6 blocks per game. Let's take another look. The South Carolina team leads the nation in block shots. Yeah, as we talked about before, um, both teams leading in, in their ability to block shots. But there's a nice drive by Koulibaly to try to alter her shot a little bit. But it's really tough doing that against uh, Little Boston. Two teams in the top ten in the country in block shots. Two of the best defensive teams in the country overall, Brett. Are we in for a defensive clinic tonight? I think so. <laughs> Sydney Shaw gets it inside to Levy. Levy against Beal. Shot no good. An offensive board from Precious Johnson. This is Sanaya Wells. She was really impressive in the loss to Mizzou. Senior guard from Mississippi. Koulibaly finds some space. Shot no good in the rebound of Brie Beal. She'll push. Beal, coast to coast. Great, great decision by Brie Beal. There you have a, a two on two play. She looked at Dye Cook in the, in the corner, figured that it wasn't a good decision, to, a better decision to take it to the basket. Brie had six points and five assists against Georgia. It's a 10-2 lead for the Gamecocks, looking for more. Cook thought about it, instead she'll drive. And lost possession, it's a steal for Auburn. Auburn averages 10.8 steals per game. Shaw, back iron, no good. Saxton with the rebound. It's an Auburn team, as I mentioned, the 10.8 steals. They'll pick your pocket, Brett. And they'll press, get after people. Tough defense to go against, but that time, Gamecocks pick up the bucket, they lead 12 to two. Yeah, but both both teams value defense. As I talked to Coach Harris the other day, uh, yesterday, she talked about how it's important to have, um, have just a solid defense to slow South Carolina offense down, but we definitely have seen that tonight. Well, how about that move from Koulibaly who finishes? Great move by Koulibaly. Again, just keeping her heads up. And she just has the ability to play against with her back against the basket as well as face up. And you can see her athleticism being expressed right there in that move. She's the fifth leading scorer in the SEC. There's an easy look to Saxton. Again, the post area has just been wide open, and not only have they been wide open, the, their teammates have found them there and been able to get them to the, um, get them the ball at the right time, and they've been able to finish. Four points for Saxton. And Sydney Shaw. Freshman will bring it back out. Wells will be called for the travel. And that'll take us to a media timeout. 4-12 left to go in the first. South Carolina leads Auburn 14-4. Welcome back inside Colonial Life Arena. South Carolina leads Auburn 14 to four. Zaya Cook coming off of a career high 31 points at Georgia. You know, in April, Brett, the mayor of Toledo, Ohio, named a portion of Hill Avenue after Zaya Cook. It was quite an honor for Cook, who helped Rogers High School to a pair of state championships before leading South Carolina to an NCAA championship last season. It was an emotional day for her. They held a ceremony at 
Piper Old High School. But a local legend, so legendary, they named the street after her. Yes, Dave, and I think it's just, a, it's, it's really cool to see this because, you know, as you're growing up and, and watching basketball and wanting to have an impact on the community as I Cook desires to have, it, it's pretty cool to have an entire street named after you. I know she talked about, or she had held camps this past summer in her name, and so she seemed to be very community-oriented uh, and community-driven, and to know that doing the sport, uh, playing the sport that you love has been able to create opportunities such as having the entire you know street named after you has to, has to feel pretty good you know and to do that only you know in college and she's doing what sometimes people take an entire lifetime to, to achieve and she's doing that in college and it's extremely um, just awesome for her to be able to do that it's great inspiration if you grow up in Toledo and you want to be a, a sure. basketball player right. and you look up and you see Zaya Cook <laughs> on a street named after her right. and what she's done at South Carolina and say, hey, I'm, I'm from Toledo and I can do that also. Exactly, exactly. It's definitely inspiration to something that's a goal that's, uh, that's achievable. Quite a performance at Georgia, 31 points. She's been lighting it up all season. She had 20 against Liberty, 18 against South Dakota State, 18 at Maryland, 17 against ETSU. Yeah, she's just been pretty, uh, just really extremely productive and consistent. You know, she talked about that before, just being consistent with her three-point shots that she's making them in practice but not necessarily able to make them in the game. So seeing that she's being productive on the, on the offensive side just, I'm sure, con contributes to her confidence. Auburn looking for a second chance opportunity. They're not going to get it. Instead, it's the Gamecocks. Fletcher inside the arc, no good. And the rebound to Sanai Wells. 14-4 is our score. All 14 points for the Gamecocks have come in the paint. Four for Auburn in the paint as well. It's an Auburn team that's a pretty good three-point shooting team. Levy, no good. I believe they shoot about 35% as a team, but their top three-point shooter not playing in Scott Grayson. She hits at a 49% clip. <laughs> what a shot. What a shot by Leah Boston. That's the first three for South Carolina. And the first three-point make of the season for Aaliyah Boston. She was 0 for 8 coming into tonight. But she has an inside-outside game. Now maybe she'll start to find Let's that find outside it. portion of it. Yeah, and again, that just adds to her, the versatility of her, her playing, her playing style, and her athleticism, just being able to play the back against the basket as well as face up. How about the response from Sydney Shaw? Great shot for Auburn. And they've been getting good looks in the game thus far, just haven't been able to get to finish. Zaya Cook off the mark. Shaw, her Tigers trail by 10. Levy from the elbow, no good. The rebound to Aaliyah Boston. Starting five still out there for the Gamecocks. Fletcher finds Saxton, has good position, and gets the bounce. Nice textbook move. Again, Saxton did not stop moving um, the entire possession. And as a reward, she was able to find herself open, and she was able to finish. Saxton has six. She's only averaging 4.4 per game this season, but they've been featuring her early on here in the first quarter. Koulibaly, no good. The rebound to Cook. Home run pass up ahead to Saxton. And a nice defensive play made by Sanaya Wells. That's great hustle play by Wells. Just to get back, not to give up on the play, and to come back and at least try to stop the shot, or he's, he's, in this case, she's up drawing a foul. It's Johnny Harris in her second season. She was previously the associate head coach at Texas in 2020-21 when they made the Elite Eight, and she was a longtime assistant here in the SEC, her longest stint, of course, at Mississippi State. Coaching at Mississippi State, she knows what it's like to come into this building and get a win, something very few can yeah. say. Yeah, yeah, for sure. She's was at Mississippi State during the, I wouldn't really call it a SE Mississippi State rival, but when Mississippi State was really developing um, as a program and making it to the Final Four in those uh, post postseason 
postseason career, um, postseason stints. Oh, this, postseason runs. Mississippi State so. was the last SEC team to win here in Columbia in 2019, and Coach Harris was on that staff. Cardozo hits the first. Camila, uh, junior center from Brazil, averaging 8.8 .8 per game, eight rebounds as well. 1.8 blocks, crazy eights this season for Camila Cardozo. <laughs> As an SEC Player of the Week honor as well, back on December 7th after a double-double against Memphis. Koulibaly. Instead, it's Wells. Under 10 for Sidney Shaw. And there's a steal for Raven Johnson. inside for Boston. Double team comes quickly. An open look for Bree Beal. That's good. What a great shot by Bree Beal. Again, you leave her open, she's going to knock that shot down. 41% three-point shooter. Another opportunity here. Passes on the three. I think the crowd wanted her to go for another one. She was wide open, just would have been early in the shot clock. Cardozo, tough angle. Wow, again, just a, a great aggressive move to see Cardozo be able to make that, really step through three defenders and still finish. Five seconds for Koulibaly. The last second heave is off the mark. Maybe didn't realize that time was running out on her. And so that takes us to the end of the first quarter, a dominant first quarter for the Gamecocks. They lead 26 to seven from Columbia. And welcome back inside Colonial Life Arena. We're getting ready for the start of the second quarter. The Gamecocks lead the Tigers 26 to seven. Coach Staley having a chat with her squad. Dawn Staley in her 15th season as the head coach here at South Carolina. You're going to see the resume, Brett. It is impressive. Absolutely. You don't find too many um, former players that has her resume as a coach. And, you know, some, a lot of former players, that's not, you know, the calling to be a coach. But I think Coach Staley has just transitioned smoothly from a coach, uh, from a player to a coach. And clearly, you know, it's evident and to see um, hear her talk early on about, you know, her goals for the program when she first got here and to see it come to fruition now. You know, this is the product of, you know, Coach Staley at her best. And the thing, the, the crazy thing about it is she she's, hasn't stopped. You know, she's continues to go, and I'm sure these stats and these numbers will continue to increase. And I have a feeling she will go down as one of the greatest coaches in women's basketball. Yeah, I talked to her at shoot-around today. She didn't always want to be a coach. You know, at yeah. first she got into it and she was at Temple, it was like, wanted to build that program, mm -hmm. just build a program and, and take them to the top. And you know, she's done that at two different two stops. Yeah. And <laughs> two I don't see stops. her going anywhere. I don't I mean, see she, She's established herself as mm -hmm. not just a coach, but the best coach out Yeah, there. for sure. Start of the second quarter, Auburn trails 26 to seven, looking to get something going. Wells pulls up, rattles it in. Nice shot for, for Wells. She, again, way to read the defense. She saw Cardo Cardoso coming towards her. She just stopped to pull up and was able to finish. Sanaya Wells, one of the players that Coach Harris inherited here when she took the Auburn position. They've been tremendously important. Kulabali another. There's a block on Ami here, but a foul called against, I believe, Precious Johnson. It is. Her second. Johnny Harris at Auburn to those three top 25 wins last year. It was Georgia Tech, Georgia, and the big one, a victory over number four, Tennessee, which was their first win over a top five opponent since 1997. A win today, excuse me, tonight here in Columbia would be their first since 1990 over a number one team in the nation. Should they achieve that feat? Ami here. Hits the first. Latisha's a 70% free throw shooter. 
senior forward for Mississauga, Ontario. Member of the Canadian national team. Drains both. Me here at six in the win over Georgia earlier this week. Levy will drive with the left hand. She draws contact. Great aggressive move by Levy. Again, her shot, she hasn't had the best of luck from the field um, thus far this game. But again, as you can tell, she was a little, little disappointed with the miss. But Auburn is going to need players and players like that to be aggressive and, and drive to the basket to, to, get a, to get Auburn on the board. Levy hits the first. She's a junior forward from Israel on the Israeli national team. She competed in 2018 under 18 Euro Championships, helped lead Israeli team to a bronze medal. Tom will have another opportunity here. It's Levy, she pulls up, kicks it back out. Shot no good from Shaw. The follow-up from Koulibaly and she draws contact. That was a great offensive play, or, or offensive possession by Auburn. Just being Shaw being ready to shoot. Koulibaly just again following, following up with the shot. And again, she's rewarded for that by getting the foul. And we just talked about one international in Levy. Here's another, Aisha Koulibaly. She's from Mali. Went to high school at IMG Academy, excuse me, Academy, but from Mali as national team experience there. Three internationals on the roster for Auburn. Fagan in some trouble. She dribbles out of it, draws contact, and gets it to go. <laughs> what an athletic play by Zania Fagan. That's a, uh, again, it, you can't throw that one up. It's drive and determination from Zania Fagan, who looked to be in trouble earlier in the play, stayed with it. And finishes the three-point play. Sophomore forward from Georgia, averaging 7.2 per game. Did not score at Georgia. She's on the board tonight. Gamecocks lead by 20. Koulibaly. Move to find some room, but can't hit. So Raven Johnson leads the Gamecocks back the other way. Ami here, puts her shoulder down, draws contact, and again, Leticia Ami here will head to the line. Looked like Auburn got caught up in a little traffic jam, a little may maybe miscommunication on defense. Some of the players you know, ran into each other. Again, aggressive di drive by Leticia Ami here. Um, and again, you get rewarded uh, for aggressive plays. Foul is on Owen Akimbalawa, freshman center from Nigeria. Akimbalawa goes 6-5. Main violation called on the Gamecocks. Akimbalawa, it's just her second game this season. She joined the team in December. I thought we might see her tonight, Brett. They need her height. Yeah, for sure. Definitely need her height to, again, take up some space in the in the post play, or just be a post presence in the post to be able to compete against Carolina post players. Speaking of post presence, the rejection from Ami here against Koulibaly. Yeah, scramble on the other end. Fagan is down. Wells as well. Foul's gonna be called on the Gamecocks. It's on Sanaya Fagan. That tremendous defense continues to roll for South Carolina. They rank first in Division I in opponent scoring average, opponent's field goal percentage, blocks per game. They dominate in the glass. want to get after it, be disruptive. They really just impose their defensive will on teams. 
They've held every team this season, Brett, under their scoring average. Three-point shot from Shaw off the mark. Fight for the rebound, and it's handled by the Gamecocks and Raven Johnson. Yeah, and again, to be able to hold teams against their scoring average means that you have to be doing something right on defense. You have to, there has to be some sort of defensive aggressiveness or prowess about you to be able to prevent you or get you out of your normal um, offensive flow. And I th that's what South Carolina has been able to do. Don Stelly preaches it, and they do it on the floor. Bree Hall drew the foul, and she'll head to the line for South Carolina as Chris Richardson checks back in for Auburn. Richardson, a freshman forward from Douglasville, Georgia, goes 6-2. Two shots for Bree Hall. Bree hit a three at Georgia. Did not play in the other SEC matchup against Texas A&M. She's a 72% free throw shooter. We saw Bree here earlier this year, Brett, with a career high 14 against Hampton. She was terrific in that one. Yeah, she definitely has her moments where her games where she, again, just have a breakout game. And it's fun to watch because she shows her ability to, um, shows her athleticism and also her ability to be, um, how she can, uh, the versatility in her scoring ability. She can knock down the three, she can drive to the basket. What a great move. Sanaya Wells goes 5-7, giving up an entire foot to Cardozo, but that move that was very gave her some space. <laughs> Again, very athletic move to you know recognize the defense and be able to adjust your body and adjust your shot. Chloe Kitts from the baseline. Got it. There she is, Chloe Kitts. Again, she, she, as she continues to play, she seems so comfortable out, um, comfortable on the floor with her new, I'm gonna say, new teammates. And you would have never guessed that she, you know, just was playing high school less than two months ago. And the number 17 recruit for the class of 2023 decided to come early. And she's a part of the rotation. Yeah, she's definitely an integral part of the rotation. She again, she has that ability to knock down the shot, and that's what Carolina is going to need. Two seconds for Shaw. She's short and hits with the rebound. An open look for Bree Hall, a good three-point shooter. It's too strong. And the rebound to Carissa Richardson. Yeah, as we talked about last, uh, just a few minutes ago, with Bree Hall ability to you know have the breakout game with 14 points versus Hampton. Again, she has the ability to knock down that three-pointer. Levy can't hit. Up ahead to Cardozo off the glass. Great pass. I have to really attribute Raven Johnson for keeping her head up and being able to see the floor to get get Cardozo the basketball at the time that she needed it and, and the right space that she needed. They play so well together. Raven averages three assists per game. These two played AAU together. The pull up is good for Sanaya Wells. Great shot by Wells. Again, she's just been really the, the, the offensive answer for Auburn in the last couple possessions. But again, that's what, that's what Auburn's going to need, someone that's relentless on offense as well as on defense. And Wells have done that, that served both roles in the game thus far. Wells has six, a four-year player for Auburn. Her best season was last year as a starter, 9.1 points per game. The turnover, check that out of the stay with South Carolina as that's off of Auburn. And it will take us to a media timeout with 4.53 left to go in the second quarter. South Carolina leads Auburn 38 to 15. Well, welcome back, Coach Harrison Company, Trail South Carolina 38 to 15. Brett, you and I had a nice conversation with Coach Harris yesterday. We asked her about this matchup with South Carolina, and she said, look, we want to compete. South Carolina has been the number one country, number one team in the country for years. Fifth year seniors, they're long and athletic, they're stingy. You have to be able to make shots against them. South uh, Auburn shooting just 23% so far. She said, we're gonna have a game plan, we'll go in, hopefully our shots will fall. But the Gamecocks are the total package. You know, depth, bench full of All-Americans, they're so well coached. You can't be afraid, you have to attack their pressure with pressure. She said, I've, I've had teams go into South Carolina and knock them off. We mentioned that 2019 team at Mississippi State that came to this building. And she said, we had to go in there to win the outright SEC championships. It can be done, it's just very tough, it's not impossible. 
and they might even be better this year than they were last year. Right, and, and she also mentioned that she doesn't want to use the excuse of that, that they're young and experienced because they have the ability to be able to compete in games like this. And she talked about them having a tough early schedule. You know, when you have the number one team in the nation this early in your schedule, it, it, it can be a little tough. Um, she talked about how they've faced so much adversity so far um, in their season. But, again, she understands where they are. And, um, again, like you said, she's just competing and looking to get the upset tonight against the number one team. I mean, think about it for Auburn, including tonight, it's seven games in a row without the pairing of their two top players. Right. Third game in a row without Scott Grayson, and they were missing Kulabali before that for a stretch. Yeah, and that can hurt a team, you know, when you're missing your best players that really are the offensive engine and you're competing in a, a conference such as the SEC. You know, those th those loss of players yeah, can really affect your play. Cardozo rebounds the Wells miss. Boston asking for it inside. They're unable to get it to her. Aaliyah Boston against Richardson. Five seconds for Fletcher. She'll pull up, drains the mid-range. That's a nice mid-range pull-up shot for, for Fletcher. You don't see her shoot too, me, too, too many of those, but when she does, she definitely has the capability of knocking that down. Fletcher was very good in the second half at Georgia's. Bostic draws the foul for Auburn. Kiera. Big numbers, but if you just look at her stat line from that win at UGA, four points, three rebounds, three assists, two steals. She filled up the stat sheet, did a little of everything for South Carolina. Again, and, and Fletcher is one of those players that is, is really essentially the floor general. You know, she can do a little bit of everything when she needs to, but um, she has this, again, a, a, an amazing ability to see the floor. And Raven Johnson as well. And these are, again, essential keys that you should have in the point guarding way. Ab ability to see the floor and to get the ball to the, to, to the teammate that's open at the right time. Marshawn Bostic, a sophomore guard from St. Louis, 62% free throw shooter coming into tonight. Misses both, it's in and out on the second. Fletcher looking for Cardozo against Levy. She converts. Again, I just this is a great shot by Cardozo, and there's a little mismatch there. Levy really didn't have much room, but to much of many options right there, but to just really tell a good job. Auburn calls timeout, trailing 42 to 15 here in the second quarter. Let's talk about the big picture for the Auburn Tigers, year two for Coach Harris and company. They've already matched last season's win total of 10. Off to a great start this season, went 10 and two in the non-conference, looking to bring that success into SEC play, but of course they've dropped their first two conference games against Ole Miss and Mizzou. Preseason number 13 in the SEC after only two conference wins last season. Tough matchup tonight, but they've been giant killers before. We mentioned last season three of their 10 wins were against top 25 opponents. But you mentioned, Brett, this is a young team, just two seniors, the all-SEC player in, in Koulibaly, who's only a junior. So the future's bright on the Plains. And it's a very talented and experienced coaching staff to bring this team along as well. Yeah, as you mentioned, you know, the future is bright. And she talked about whenever you take care of the, taking over the program, you know, you have to bring in recruits. And sometimes that takes a couple years uh, to, to develop or to build that class that can really execute your style of play. And that's what Auburn is doing here. And that's what Coach Harris is doing here with, with the Auburn program. Johnny Harris is an excellent recruiter with stat classes. She talked about that with us. We've seen it with this talented, defensive-minded freshman class they brought in. One of those players, Caitlin Duhon, now Bostic. There's a steal for Zaya Cook. And off the hands of Beal and out of play. It'll remain. Looks like with the Gamecocks. Gamecock basketball. Starting five back in for South Carolina. Under three remaining here in the second quarter. Saxton, she was great early on. Passes it out. Now Vitaria makes her move. Lost the handle, it's off of Auburn. 
South Carolina will have 10 seconds here. Senior forward from Rome, Georgia, Victoria Saxton. Been a captain for so many years here, a great leader. Kicks it out to Cook. They swing it to Beal, an open three. In and out. An offensive board from Saxton in the putback. Great aggressive rebound by Victoria Saxton. Just, again, being ready to uh, to see the floor for one to kick it out and then just being ready to clean up shop there. And there she has it, able to put Carolina on the board for two more points. Saxton has eight. Her season high is 11. Richardson runs out of room. She has it stolen by Fletcher. Two on one for the Gamecocks. Fletcher makes her move. Great decision by Fletcher. I think she was looking at Zaya Cook to see, hey, you know, where are you going to move and where are you going to go? I think I would just keep it and I think I would just finish. Four for Kiara Fletcher, the grad transfer from Georgia Tech. Almost another turnover for Auburn. Well, Romy Levy will check back in for the Tigers. She'll re replace Maya Pratcher. Pratcher, freshman from Memphis, Tennessee, getting some instruction from Coach Harris. Pratcher is one of those players that Coach Harris talked about. It's just she's learning. She's an athlete. She gets a lot done. Um, she's fearless. This pressure from South Carolina, relentless. Bree Beal might be the best defensive player in the country. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think, again, like you said, pressure, relentless pressure forces uh, turnovers. And that's what we see uh, in that last possession. Beal's tied for first on the team in steals, third in blocks. Terrific lockdown player. And of course, 41% three point shooter. Yeah, she's again, she's one of those reliable guards that you know that if she gets open, that you definitely need to put one. She doesn't need to be left open, but if she left, is left open, you have to close out on her. Oh, how about Kula Bali who drains it before the buzzer? Great shot. Again, and also great awareness to know the shot clock is running down to be able to get that shot off in time. Kulabali has six. Cook feeds Boston. Again, textbook play. Uh, Zaya Cook, again, just knowing where Aaliyah Boston is. And Aaliyah Boston, again, continue to move to put herself in a position to be able to receive the basketball to finish. Nine points, four boards for Boston, and another block. Again, she's taking care of business on both ends of the floor. You know, people were talking about how oh, she was shut down at Georgia. You talk to Coach Staley and she'll tell you, you pick your poison, Georgia, you know, just allowed them to shoot the outside shots. They triple team, quadruple teamed yeah. Leah Boston at times. <laughs> Here she is on the inside, drawing all sorts <laughs> of, de of defense from Auburn. And speaking of triple team, as you can see a possession as such, you know, when Leah gets the basketball, she draws so much defensive attention. Don said, you know, I told Leah to consider it flattery. It took four people to guard her, and no one <laughs> in the country has to deal with that. But because of her, everyone on the team got better. She's still the best player in the country. No one is seeing what she has to see on the offensive end. Teams are really just trying to cancel her out. That's to the benefit of her teammates, and we saw Zai Cook put up the career numbers. Up. Right, and, and Coach is absolutely right in that she's still the best country, best player in the country. And when, when teams focus so much on her, it leaves players like Zaya Cook, the Bree Bills, and uh, the Bree Hall uh, opportunity to, you know, to step up and deliver, and that's what they did. It's a 49 to 20 lead for the Gamecocks. Bostic is denied by Fletcher. Zaya Cook up ahead. Got a six sec second differential between shot clock and game clock. And now South Carolina will call timeout. <laughs> Coach Daly <laughs> calling her troops over. <laughs> They'll set up a final shot here at the end of the second quarter. I think a player may have lost her shoe. Just trying to figure out who he was going to. Well, the Gamecocks defending national champions. Coach Daly's second championship with the Gamecocks. 
as you've seen all night there, deep up front, talent upon talent. Best player in the country in Aaliyah Boston, future pros around her as well. And their bench players would be top options at other schools, a really unselfish group that comes together to win and learn how to be great. They've done just that. I asked Coach Staley at shoot around today, you know, in her 15 years, what separates this team from the other teams. And she said it's it's really just experience. Mm -hmm. Experience of this team. It's a veteran group. They've been around so much, they're business-like. And they've been that way as long as they've been here. Yeah, and an experience, of course, it shapes the dynamics of your team. It shapes the fabric of your team when you have that many people coming in with their life experience. Fletcher right drains the three. Great shot. I think we were just talking a minute ago. She doesn't shoot many threes, but when she, get, when she does, again, great shot. In South Carolina, 52 to 20 lead at the half. First three-point make of the season for Kiera Fletcher. We saw that earlier in the half for Aaliyah Boston. So Boston Fletcher, Gamecock, get it going from behind the arc. Yeah, absolutely. Again, great to see them, these players, be able to knock down a three and be consistent with their three-point shots. So it's halftime here in Columbia. South Carolina leads Auburn. 52 to 20. It's halftime here in Columbia. South Carolina leads Auburn 52 to 20. Dave and Brett back with you. South Carolina has done a nice job all season long, Brett, holding teams below their season averages. The first couple of SEC games, they've held teams 20 points below their average. Auburn averages in the 70s. They only have 20 at the half. Again, what we talked about before, holding teams to their average, you have to have some sort of defensive proudness about you to be able to do that. You have to have some sort of defensive consistency, and that's what South Carolina does. They, they rush, they, they move the ball, they play, play a very fast-paced game, and sometimes doing, doing that, well, generally all the time when you do that, you disrupt their offense. And when you're disrupting offense, you make it very, very difficult for the other team to score. And again, South Carolina is just operating in there, what they do uh, defensively, forcing turnovers, rush the opponent, and it makes it very difficult for the opponent to score. For. And it's been a tough go for Auburn offensively. They have hit a couple of threes. We're going to take a look at some highlights from the first half, starting with the Tigers. And Koulibaly was your player to watch. Again, again, that's her making a basket there, trying to be aggressive. And Wells, you know, stepping up to the plate there. I mentioned the outside shots from Auburn. Two for five. Buzzer beating heave from Koulibaly. The story has been the defense of South Carolina, specifically block shots. They have five of them, three of them from Aaliyah Boston. Again, South Carolina, both teams are its ranked top 10 and block shots, but again, South Carolina is number one. And as you can see, the, it's just very, very difficult to be able to score against their post players. And how about the ball movement from the Gamecocks, who have a team high 13 assists so far in the first half? I mean, again, you can just tell that they practice this. They play very, very well together. They know which e where each other are. are move and again, moving without the basketball has returned. Uh, they have been uh, able to return on, the, on their investment in that in that category. Boston has three assists. Fletcher has three. A couple from Raven Johnson. A couple from B. Beal. Really, everyone's gotten involved in the passing game. Yeah, in the passing game for sure. Be getting everyone involved. Everyone is getting touches. And the people that are, again, that are moving but without the basketball allows yourself to be open and to get the ball right when you need it. And here's your game summary. And Brett's player to watch for the Tigers was Koulibaly. Eight points, three for 10. Three rebounds as well. Vittoria Saxton with nine points and three boards, two points away from her season high. That was 11 earlier this season against ETSU, but check out that field goal percentage, 20 of 30 for Gamecocks. Again, this is very efficient. And as you, we talked about before, even when you know the players are, are smothering, uh, opponents are smothering Aaliyah Boston, you have other players that are stepping up to the paint and able to knock down shots and be productive on the offensive side. Doubled them up in rebounds and almost three times as many points in the paint. Yeah, again, South Carolina's game, being able to get the ball inside, feed the bigs first. And not only feed the bigs, but bigs, but they've been they've been finishing. Also, not only um, in, in a possession, but in transition, they've been able to finish the basketball inside the paint. So Auburn will look to get something going here as we get ready for the start of the second half. Tigers trailing. 52 to 20. They lost to South Carolina 75 to 38 
last season. This is the first of two meetings this season. How about that first quarter? And they held Auburn to just seven points, single digits for the 22nd time this season. Again, just that, the, the, that aggressive uh, offensive or aggressive defensive play where they Carolina just has an ability to disrupt your offense. When, you're in, when your offense is disrupted, it's really, again, just difficult to score. And not only that, when you're trying to drive to the basket, when you have um, post players like Cardoza, Saxon, and Boston just there and their, their, their size and their presence, you know, sometimes you know, your shots get blocked. So sometimes even if you do have a good look, your shots may not necessarily fall because of their just overall presence in the paint and make it very, very difficult for teams to score. Auburn averaging 74.4 per game. Well off of that total. Again, Scott Grayson, their top three-point shooter, not active tonight. They do have Shaw, Levy, Johnson all putting up good numbers from behind the arc this season. Inside scoring from players like Koulibaly. They need their defense to produce offense as well. And they're capable of that because Auburn averages 22 and a half points off turnovers this season. Fletcher finds Saxton, the mid-range off the mark. Offensive rebound for Aaliyah Boston. She's rejected from behind. That was Precious Johnson. Precious, a 6'5 center from Baytown, Texas. One start this season coming into tonight. That was at Ole Miss last Thursday. Didn't score. She's in there for defense. We'll go the other way here. Kiara Fletcher finds Beal. Beal weaves her way inside, misses with the left hand. The putback is good for Saxton and one. And again, that's what we talked about just a few minutes ago that uh, Victoria Saxton just being the, where she needs to be when she needs to be there, moving without the basketball and going towards crashing the board to get those cleanup shots. Saxton, a 71% free throw shooter coming into tonight. Preseason second team, all SEC selection. Now a season high 12. Again, Victoria Saxon just um, has the ability to finish and she does the little things too that, do, that, that don't always find itself on the stat sheet or show up on the stat sheet, like we said before, just moving without the basketball. Pull up jumper from Saniya Wells. Wells has been, again, extremely productive for Auburn basketball and in, in terms of offensive. She's been really getting the offense going. You know, she's not afraid to drive to the basket, and she's not afraid to pull up for jump shot just like that. She's played in 89 career games for Auburn coming in tonight. So this is number 90, four-year player. It was there before. Johnny Harris took over. One of those veterans that had to buy in to a new coaching staff. That's never easy. Yeah, never easy. Kulabali, another one of those players. She misses, and so the rebound to Kiara Fletcher. Up ahead, Bree Beal. Hook was open for a moment in the corner, and they try to swing it over to her, but not on the same page, Boston and Zaya Cook. Yeah, it looks like a little miscommunication. As we talked about before with Wells, she's just been the offensive engine for Auburn tonight. She's uh, has 10 plus games where she's uh, scored 10, four games or more where she scored 10 plus points. So they definitely depend on her to to be offensively productive. Great move from Kulabali. She can't finish, and Saxton fighting hard for the rebound. Taria Saxton has already set a season high in points tonight. Talk about all the things she does well. One of the most underappreciated things, Brett, for a player, durability. Victoria Saxton yeah. started all 37 games last year. She started every game so far this season. She's getting some medical attention on the side. 
but she's a durable, tough player for South Carolina. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that you, you hit the nail on the head there. Just, again, durable, uh, dependable, and, again, she shows up in places that don't necessarily always follow up on the uh, – show up on that stat, stat sheet. And she's that leader, and, again, and then it reflects on the floor and, and off the floor as well when you can just have that person that you can just – that player that you can just refer to or count on for consistency. You know, she's going to do the little things. And even in that moment, she took a shot to the face uh, for a second. <laughs> right back on the floor. Right back on the floor. <gasps> Setting screens. And the toughest player out there. Beal on the drive. Can't finish. Saxon fighting for the rebound. It's tapped out. There's Boston. And whistle. It's like a foul. It's going to be called on Sydney Shaw. Shaw was the SEC Freshman of the Week back on December 28th. She leads the SEC. Leads SEC Freshman in assists per game. Didn't score on Sunday against Mizzou. It was 0 for 6, the only game she's been shut out this season. She's marking Fletcher. Cook, five seconds. She'll drive, a collision. And the basket is good for Cook. Wow. I'll give it to her. Yeah, great aggressive play, aggressive drive by, by Cook. And also, you know, a, a good defensive at this at this point, you know, Wells did her best to try to um, try to defend her. It looks like she kind of ran into a traffic jam a little bit with another one of her teammates. So again, just going back to having to communicate on defense. Foul will be called on Sanaya Wells. Cook has seven. Gamecocks lead 58-22. Koulibaly against Boston. Tremendous defense from Aaliyah Boston, who really affected that shot. It's Fletcher the other way. He's swinging around. Cardozo in the post. And the foul will be called on Akim Balawa. We saw Akim Balawa briefly in the first half. Just her second game of the season. Played two minutes earlier this season against North Florida. Out of Lagos, Nigeria. Six foot five. She just got to the program, so she's learning on the fly, yeah. offense, defense. Yeah. yeah, definitely learning on the on the fly. Definitely having her uh, a nice welcome to the SEC play. Coach Harris forced to play her tonight because of that height. Cardozo hits the second. And she really is the best matchup against Cardozo um, in terms of height-wise and body size. You can see exchange for Richardson coming back in, but again, her presence is really good when you have Cardoso and Boston in the game at the same time. And that's what South Carolina has it now. Richardson's on Cardoso. Koulibaly's on Boston. That shot no good. Cardoso off the glass and in. Great job. Again, we talked about ball movement before and that is textbook ball movement right there. Great job by Fletcher seeing Cardoso open and Cardoso finishing. Wells, nice move around Fletcher. Nice athletic move. Again, Wells has been the offensive engine for Auburn tonight. And again, she's been productive on, on both ends of the floor. Boston inside. She draws the foul. I believe it's going to be called on Carissa Richardson. Check that, they call it on Precious Johnson. Well, they do call it on Richardson. Let's take another look. Yeah, yeah, I think that one's on, on Richardson. Boston hits the first. Leah Boston, a 74% free throw shooter. Hit 
them both. Here's Koulibaly. Richardson against Cardozo. Tough assignment. Looks like a foul's going to be called on Cardozo. Crowd here inside. CLA does not agree. Another look, Brett. Yeah, I think she may have had some sort of contact with her arms. Let's get Carissa Richardson to the line. And this is the first. Freshman from Douglasville, Georgia, out of New Manchester High School. It was all state there. Chose Auburn over Alabama, Pitt, and Rutgers. She's been a primary starter in her freshman season. Boston quickly double teamed. Ball movement from Carolina. It goes to the hands of Cook, but she recovers. 10 seconds on the shot clock for Zai Cook. She makes her move. Tries to feed Cardoza. It was a good idea. They can't connect. Yeah, as you said, a good idea. Seeing the ball, Cardoza just was not ready for that possession. So it's a turnover for the Gamecocks. They're eighth. Again, this is an Auburn team that forces over 20 per game. Shot pulls up off the mark. Auburn defense has forced 20 plus turnovers in eight of 12 games this season. They're seven and one in those eight games. Again, they converge on Boston. It's taken away by Koulibaly. Three on one, Koulibaly will finish. Nice textbook transition play there by Auburn. Again, aggressive uh, play, as you can see on the offensive side, or on Auburn caused a turnover and converted that turnover into, a, to, into two points. Koulibaly has 10. She averages 16.7 per game, beating Auburn in that category. Zaya Cook in the corner, an open look. That's good. And there she is. She's back. <laughs> Great shot by Zaya Cook. Again, we know she has the ability to knock that shot down, and when she's on, she's on. She's been on lately. It's not the player you want to leave open behind the line. Wells, she'll draw the foul on Cardozo. Again, I just continue to call her the offensive engine because she has just been so productive on the, on the offensive side. Gamecocks lead 66-26. Zaya Cook doing her thing from the corner. Welcome back inside Colonial Life Arena. 3.53 remaining in the third quarter. South Carolina leads Auburn 66 to 26. Year two for Johnny Harris at the helm for the Auburn Tigers. What a talented staff they have there. Fred Williams, the associate head coach in his first season. Over 40 years of coaching experience. 25 at the pro level. Demetria Buchanan, Coach Chapel, Connor Putman, a great addition this season. And Brett, we talked to Coach Harris on Zoom in our interview about her staff. And she just raved about mm -hmm. Coach Buchanan and the addition of Coach Williams this season. And the players just respect him so much. He actually coached Don Staley with the Charlotte Sting. Yeah, and has a, a ton of experience in, uh, in the pro professional ranks um, with several WNBA teams. And being able, she talked about him coming in with just knowledge and understand, understanding and passion and knowledge on the game and how the players have been able to glean from that. Also, some of her former players um, that she said she brought in, not because that they were just her former players, but because they were actually really good at what they do. You know, they're really good at recruiting. Um, and the players, again, able to relate to them and able to connect with them. And they know what she wants. And I think that's very important when you're bringing staff on um, that know what you want. They know the type of style of play that you want to achieve and to have that on the team, uh, on, on, that, on her staff. Um, Coach Harris seems to be pretty excited about. And they know each other so well. Coach yeah. Buchanan won Big 12 championships with Johnny at Texas A&M. Coach Chapel played for her at Mississippi State. Right. So there's a trust factor there. Yeah, for sure, a trust factor, and it's an easy buy-in. And when you, um, again, when you 
the players, when you bring in a staff that understands that your vision and able to relate to the players, um, it's just a win-win situation. 66 to 27 is our score here in the third quarter. Koulibaly makes her move, spins on Boston, runs out of room. In 10 seconds for Johnson. Puts it up over Beal, shot no good. Johnson, that's a great look to Cardozo, who finishes off the glass. Again, I, that, that is, have to attribute that assist to, to, to Johnson, who, who just kept her head up and was able to get the ball to Cardozo right when she needed it. As you can see, again, her head is up. Nice lofted pass. Cardozo jumps to go get it and is able to finish. Raven Johnson coming back from Injury this season. A young point guard that has a great feel for the game. And three assists. Boston spin move. No call it for the travel. Boston can't believe the call. Yeah, she looks like he was just spin and definitely not definitely not satisfied or happy with the call. Leah has 11 points and eight boards. Two rebounds shy of yet another double-double. She already has 68 of those in her career. Johnson sets up the offense for the Gamecocks. Inside look to Cardozo. And a whistle and a foul is going to be called on Auburn. It's called on Marshawn Bostick. And check that. Precious Johnson. Johnson picks up her fourth. Bostick checks out. As Sydney Shaw checks back in. Camila Cardozo to the line for South Carolina. Junior from Brazil. And this is the first. Cardozo has been a freshman year at Syracuse, was ACC Co-Defensive Player of the Year as a freshman. ACC Freshman of the Year. Transferred to South Carolina last year. An average about five points, five rebounds a game last season. Her debut season for the Gamecocks. Adjusting to a different style of play, but the numbers are up this season. Koulibaly. Nice shot. It's good to see Koulibaly again be productive on the offensive side for Auburn and just, again, getting Auburn's offense going. She's got 12. It's a 40-point lead for South Carolina. Trying to get it inside to Cardozo. Just too much height over two Tigers. Can't convert. Duhan stops, pops. It's short. Another opportunity. Duhan the floater's no good. The hustle of Duhon, keeping it alive for Auburn. Freshman guard from Houston, Texas. Great hustle possession from, from Auburn. A stoppage. Not sure what the call is here, Brett. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, we know it's not a timeout. Could it be a clock problem? Not sure. All right, looks like we're ready to resume. Shot inbound for the Tigers. Jaquela Johnson, Juco transfer from Jones College. He's been starting of late. Johnson's coming from Jones College under the head coach of Coach Missy Bilderbat. A great stellar program there. She had her shot swatted away by Bree Beal. Again, there's a defensive stopper there, doing what she does the best. Beal averaging one and a half blocks per game. She'll check out. Another look at the defense from Bree Beal. Just denying Ja'Kayla Johnson. Raven Johnson. Cardozo had position inside. Again, we have a, you know, 
almost a, a Shaq and Kobe duo here. Uh, Raven Johnson and Cardoso just play so well together. She knows exactly where to get her the ball. And again, Cardoso continues to move and Raven just continues to keep, um, keep her eyes up and just keep being aware uh, of where her teammates are on the court. Yeah. Raven always seems to have a way of putting Cardozo in position to be dominant. Yeah, that's a better phrase. Putting her in a position to be dominant. Gamecocks can set up for a final shot here. Time ticking down at the end of the third quarter. Raven Johnson checked by Ja'Kayla Johnson. It's Raven. She hits. Nice shot. And the Johnson Johnson matchup. Good pull up by Raven Johnson. Raven Johnson gets on the score sheet for the first time tonight. Her first bucket. It brings us to the end of the third quarter. South Carolina leads Auburn 73-29. Welcome back inside Colonial Life Arena. South Carolina leads big as we get ready for the start of the fourth quarter. And Coach Staley has been dominating SEC opponents her entire coaching career here at South Carolina. Yeah, and again, this is a, it just speaks to her ability and her and her coaching staff ability to be able to coach and recruit number one recruit players to come in and to complete, co compete against the toughest con conference. Um, I mean, again, to be 90 and 22 in the, in the toughest conference says a lot about you and your coaching staff and your ability to recruit the players to bring it in and get the job done. Gamecocks getting the best of Auburn tonight. Brett, Don Stelly coached you, but you have some Auburn connections as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Auburn was almost someone in my blood before I was even born. Um, I had two aunts to, to play, Mayola and, and Ruthie Bolton, to play at Auburn in the 80s, and that was when you know, Auburn was the premier program. They made it to the Final Fours. And again, it was just uh, both numbers and jerseys are retired now at Auburn. Certainly a source of pride for your family. Oh, yeah, for sure. I always say, you know, we bleed the SEC. So whenever we play, you know, Auburn, obviously it means a lot to just um, hearing about Auburn basketball was really what got me into basketball early on in my early um, playing career. Koulibaly will drive, splits a couple of Gamecocks, but she's rejected by Fagan. Koulibaly is down on the floor. Hopefully she's all right. Yeah, aggressive play by Tanai Fagan. Take another look as the 6'3 Fagan gets the best of six foot Koulibaly. The ball is all right. Levy pulls up. She draws contact. Naomi Levy, we haven't seen much of here in the second half. Junior forward from Israel, averaging eight and a half per game. It's good for third on the team. She can fill it up. Crew high 18 points, 13 boards against Little Rock. Back on November 30th, her first start of the season. We had six on Sunday against Mizzou. And this is the first. Missed last season with a torn ACL that was suffered on October 31st, just before the season began. It's loud here in CLA. Chick-fil-A on the line, and Levy spoils it. Yeah, and again, to be able to recover from an injury that soon, you know, speaks a lot to who you are as a, as a person and as a player and your dedication to the game and dedication to, to be great and to contribute to the contribute to your team and she's been again aggressive all game she's had sh open shots she's have had a difficult time for them to connect but again she's been a aggressive she's been fearless and relentless for Auburn in today's game tonight's game Fagan's double teams a whistle and a foul is going to be called on the Auburn Tigers it's on Caitlin Duhon another look He 
Green here playing the point right now for the Gamecocks. Boston hands off to Bree Hall. Raven Johnson. Good luck to Aliyah Boston. Again, textbook pick and roll, or pick and slip in that, in that case, right there between Johnson and Boston. Great pass by Johnson, good finish by Boston. Raven Johnson, you can tell it's a different style of point guard, Brett, from Kiara Fletcher. Both are effective. Right, yeah, yeah. What you, they do. Yeah, you make a good point. They're very different style, uh, different style point guards that um, both have the ability to score, but they just score in a different way. They have a different way that they finesse the basketball when they're dribbling, a different way to pass. An offensive rebound for Sanaya Fagan. She's trapped, it's deflected and into the hands of Caitlin Duhon. Duhon, who started the first game, six games of the season, has been playing off the bench since. Kula Bali will launch, no good. Ami here feeds Fagan. Again, get coast to coast drive by Ami here. She had her head up, looking for the open, open man or open woman, and she found Fagan right under the basket. Ami here so valuable, six foot four, but she can play all five positions on the floor. How about that finish from Sanaya Wells? Probably been the most impressive Tiger tonight. Yeah, I, and I agree. She's just had a, a very productive offensive game. She's really been the offensive engine, as I said before, for the Auburn Tigers. And she's not afraid to go into the land of Giants. And she's have had success thus far when she has dr driven into the lane. Johnson from the corner, no good. Koulibaly with the rebound. Home run pass up ahead to Duhan, one-on-one -on -one against Hall. Another opportunity. Shot no good in the rebound to Raven Johnson. Raven feeds Fagan again. <laughs> again, as we talked about before, her and Fletcher, just both are point guards, but have a very different style of play. She has a, an, a, an ama amazing ability to get the ball to the right person at the right time. Six assists now for Raven Johnson, the freshman guard from Atlanta, Georgia. Take us to a media timeout. That's a 79 to 34 lead for South Carolina with 6.32 left to go. Brett, you and I were talking in the break. You've been really impressed with the play of Sanaya Wells was 13 points. Cool Bollywood was your player to watch. She has 14. There were a couple of holdovers from the previous regime that Coach Harris inherited. And we asked Coach Harris about the buy-in factor with those players and said, you know. They've really bought in. They're working hard to try to lead this young group. And with their buy-in, the ones we recruited, they knew what they were coming into. So now they're all bought in. They all want to win. They're all working extremely hard. And it's a competitive group of kids. But there's no substitute for experience. So the more they play, the better this team's going to be. But it's really important when you come to a program for the first time that the players that you inherit buy into what you want to do and lead the players that you're able to recruit. You're right. I mean, you said that it's two key words. It's buying, buying in. You have to buy into the new system that the coaches may be um, implementing. And sometimes when you're you're not buying into that system, it can be a little bit difficult for you to play your game and to accomplish what it is that you the coach wants you to, to accomplish. So for Wells and uh, Kulabali, Kulabali, Kulabali. 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 thank you. It's not easy. <laughs> Kulabali um, has done, they bought into the, the system here and they've, they've been rewarded for it. And they certainly have shown leadership for Coach Harris, helping out the younger players. This is Wells. Ami here up ahead. She'll finish off the glass. Good finish by me here. Almost thought she was rounding up for a dunk, but I think she just decided to lay it in. And she has dunked in her past, Letitia and me here. The first Canadian woman to dunk it, so at the age of 15. Of course, we've seen Ashlyn Watkins dunk a couple of times this season. Koulibaly, too strong. A whistle and a foul that's going to go against the Gamecocks. Let's 
Moonsault on Chloe Kitts. Olivia Thompson checks in for the first time for South Carolina, replacing Raven Johnson. Johnson was outstanding running the show tonight for South Carolina. Yeah, Six definitely. Six assists. Definitely productive time here. Um, Johnson's time on the floor. Thompson is an excellent three-point shooter. We'll see if she'll get the opportunity to pull the trigger at some point here in the second half of the fourth quarter. As we approach five minutes remaining in the fourth. Mihir, Hall, Fagan, Thompson, and Kitts on the floor for South Carolina. Hall will drive to the glass. Great aggressive play by Bree Hall. Again, her versatile like, athleticism for her to be able to put the ball on the floor to get to the basket, but also knock down a three. I think that's, again, a great smart drive for her. Hall has four. Averages 6.2 per game. And we have a timeout here with 4.38 remaining in the fourth. South Carolina leads Auburn 83-36. to We'll take the timeout as well. And welcome back to Columbia. South Carolina leads Auburn 83-36. to in a battle between the preseason number one team in the SEC and the preseason number 13 team in the SEC in Auburn. It's because of the youth of the Auburn Tigers and coaching staff, which Harris in her second season. She wants us to know that this is a very hardworking team. They have, they have good chemistry. She said, I, I really believe our, our best is coming. We're on track. She loves her first recruiting class. And she has a really good class coming in. She talked about how you build the program and stacking classes, and we mentioned that in the first half. But she said, look, look, our program is on the rise. My coaching staff is in it. The kids can see that. I really do believe sooner than later this team will be making some noise, and we believe that as well. It's just a tough matchup tonight here at South Carolina. Yeah, you're right, absolutely. T uh, t tough matchup, and as we talked about before, anytime you're coming in to a program where you're inheriting players, it takes some time to build. It takes some time to get players to get – the players that you want that fits your playing style to mesh with also the players that are there with the experience. And like you said, it's taking time, but Auburn is on the rise. Bree Hall for three. Bree's a 39% three-point shooter coming into tonight. Hit one earlier in the week at Georgia. The answer from Koulibaly is off the mark. Rebound in the hands of Levy. Koulibaly. Great aggressive play by Auburn to, to stay with it, and they were rewarded with, with two points. Ami here, last second, tried to feed Fagan. Looks like they were trying to work against Auburn's 2-3 zone. Gamecock three-point shooting tonight. We're at five for 12. A team that dominates the paint so much and some of the criticisms earlier in the season were about you know, distant shooting. Will they have it in, in tougher games? The last couple of, of matchups, Georgia, this one. And there's <laughs> Thompson as I talk about three-point yeah, shooting. She buries one. Perfect timing to talk about three-point shooting. I think the bench you know, erupted to see her score and makes her teammates really happy and that's what she's on the floor for you know coach really depends on the team depends on her to be able to knock down that three ball levy shot no good last few games though really been on target from behind the arc yeah and that we talked about as i cook talked about that in a previous press conference how and you know, even her shooting you know she said she's making them in practice but having difficulty for them to knock down in the game and again, with Olivia Thompson there. Great three-point sh great three-point shooter. And the team is going to definitely need her, um, especially later in the season, to be able to knock down those three-point shots. And those shots have to be confidence boosters as well, you know. Every shot Thompson has taken this season has been from three. She's now five for 18. Ami here will drive. Shot no good, and the rebound for Akimbalawa. Lawa. 
Sydney Shaw pulls up and hits. Nice pull up jumper by Shaw. Shaw out of DME Academy in Daytona Beach where she was a teammate of Chloe Kitts. Both on the floor together right now, just on opposing teams. Kitts wearing number 21 in white. Shaw number 10 in blue. Hits wide open, baseline jumper is good. Nice shot, she is a point, points to Thompson. Thanking her for the assist, great shot. Chloe, we were here for her seven point, excuse me, 10.7 rebound debut against CSU. And travel called here, it's a turnover for Auburn. Minute 40 remaining. South Carolina leads Auburn 91 to 40. Amir open, passing the shot. Said they'll swing it back around to Kitts. She'll fire from deep, short. It's Auburn basketball. Ninety-one points for the Gamecocks. The third highest total of the season so far. 102 against Coastal Carolina. We were here for that, Brett, and 101 in the opener against ETSU. Yeah, definitely, again, uh, ability to score in, you know, in high numbers. Again, when you're on efficient on offense and defense, uh, it, you set yourself up for these types of games. A minute remaining. Great ball movement. Ami here, an open look. And Sydney Shaw will bring it up for the Tigers. Fagan with the rebound. Bring it up herself. Fagan so talented. The ball skills for a taller forward. Yeah, they definitely have the ability. I'm pretty sure she has to step into uh, a more of a guard role. I have no doubt that she will easily transition. Three seconds. Ami here will fire. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> What a great shot. That one good before the buzzer for Sydney Shaw. Count it for the freshman guard from Miami. South Carolina gets the win over Auburn, 94 to 42. The Gamecocks improve to 15 and 0, 3 and 0 in the SEC. Auburn will drop to 10 and 5, 0 and 3 in the SEC. Brett, dominant victory for South Carolina. As you mentioned, Dave, just a dominant um, to start off the game with the points in the paint, just dominating in transition. Again, it's really tough for. Um, uh, tough for, for teams to stop when you have that many points in the point paint and also when you have the amount of production that the bench has produced. Again, that's a, a, a common narrative with South Carolina being able to their bench production, and they did it once again tonight. Well, next up for the Gamecocks, Sunday, January 8th at Mississippi State, and next up for the Tigers, Sunday, January 8th against Alabama. That'll do it for us here inside Colonial Life Arena for Brett Ball and the rest of our crew. I'm Dave Weinstein saying so long from Columbia, South Carolina, a winner, 94-42.